nice skin, so gorgeous. We thank the life, gorgeous. Thank the life, gorgeous. I love the life, gorgeous. It's also so tight. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Life Gorgeous. My name is Craig Kilborn. This is where I share my magical life in hopes of improving your life. I always say it's a special show, but today is very special for me. You guys know I'm a Timberwolves fan, and we have the voice of the Timberwolves, Michael Grady. And let me warn you. He has a very mellifluous voice, a very velvety voice. Ladies, don't get hypnotized. Listen to the content that we're talking about. Please welcome Michael Grady. <sighs> How was that intro, buddy? I love the intro. I love the intro. And good to finally be on with you. Yeah, we good didn't meet uh, we yet. didn't meet in LA because you guys were up in way up there, up yeah. in the stands, you and Jim Pete calling the game. I should point out to you, we're recording the, what is it, the Wednesday? Is today Wednesday? After the big win by the Wolves at the Nets, your old stomping ground. And, but this doesn't air until next Tuesday, which is two days after the end of the season. So we don't know where the Wolves are going to be. I, I think they're going to be eighth. I looked at the schedule of certain teams, but we'll find out. Anywho. I want to tell you I'm a fan of yours. You have the great pipes. We'll talk about that. But I think you're clever, and I'm going to go over a couple of the things you say that I like. First of all, respect the hay. What is respect the hay? <laughs> so we started picking up several games into the season that every time Anthony Edwards would drive to the hoop and try to get the attention of the officials <laughs> on what he felt was clear contact, he would shout, hey. Uh, it was almost impulsive um, in the same way we see tennis players grunting right. after uh, hitting the ball. It was just instinctive, driving, right. Cut, hey, right. hey, and and uh, he wasn't getting calls. Right. And so we, Jim and I were just joking that the officials are not respecting the hay. That is so funny. Have to respect the hay. <laughs> that is so funny. And now, of course, when he drives and gets bumped and the whistle blows, they respected the hay. I just, they respected the hay. By the way, did, took does, a while. does he, uh, is it true? Does, is he like one of the top guys with technicals, a Anthony Edwards? He is. I, I believe he is still top five. Oh, my I Lord. I believe he is still top five. Yes. That's crazy. Yes. So 21 years old. He's fiery. And some of the more competitive, fiery guys in the league are high up there on that list. Right. Um, you know, Draymond Green's up there. Dylan Brooks is way up there. Luca's more more whiny. Oh boy, is he's high yeah, up on that Yeah, that's a good distinction. <laughs> Luca whines. Dylan Brooks is kind of a, I think it's a pugilist, or he's a fighter, a uh, yes. enforcer. But does anyone talk to Ant about that? Or can you pull him aside? Do you have that authority, Michael? Yes. And you know what? They started talk. I mean, they talked to him throughout the, the season, CK, but there was a moment where he either picked up his 13th or 14th technical. And when you get to 16, right. you're automatically suspended. At this point, we know that he missed games with that ankle injury uh, that yeah. he suffered in uh, Chicago. But at that point, he had played every game of the season. He had just gone through the all-star break where he talked about his dislike for load management and that players need to go out there and play every single night. And just the irony of the fact that he could miss his first game of the season, not because of an injury or an ailment or whatever it may be, but because of his temper. Yeah. Um, I'm sure someone got through to him. And since that moment, it's, it's, uh, his, his emotions have been under control. He still gets after the officials, but he ha he's, he's yeah. done a solid job of not crossing the line. Uh, that's great. Okay. I'm going to continue with some of the catchphrases, some of your th things that I like, because as a, when I grew up, uh, I read a lot of sports illustrated. It was a big deal in the seventies. And these writers would turn a phrase. Uh, there was a, a guy named Jim Murray who wrote for sports illustrated, but was famous for the LA times. And he wrote, um, I just love this. It's poetic, but it's, uh, Willie Mays's glove is where triples go to die, which is very good. But you have a couple other ones I want to ask you about and then build up to one. Uh, is it punch the passport? Is, is that <laughs> yes, one with yes, Rudy? On that a couple of times. Yes, he's um, the, the Euro step. And there's several guys on the team 
who love utilizing the euro. Right. Kyle Anderson is one. <laughs> uh, Nas Reed right. is another. And um, Gobert, and I say this affectionately, his euro is is probably the most comical because he does it in tight spaces yeah. and it doesn't necessarily look as smooth, but it's still effective. So when there is an effective um, yeah. Gobert euro, and I'll drop it on other guys too. Yeah, you definitely, uh, you have to stamp the passport. I, That's, is uh, it stamp impressive. or punch? I can't remember which one it is. I may have used both. Okay. I know I've definitely used stamp. I may, I may have used both for sure. Is Rudy's Eurostep slower than Slow-Mo's? I'm going to say it's just a, it's, it's a little bit faster because he uses fewer steps. Okay. Slow-Mo has the long strides. Right. Where you almost worry about a shot clock violation when he gets into the move. Right. You, no, Bears is... <laughs> Very, very tight. Where uh, Anderson, it's right. It's, um, it's slow and methodical okay. and effective. Okay, so uh, this was a pretty special one. I got to hear about this one. This is one of your calls, Madison Square Garden, Torian Prince. Remember what you said when he hit a three? Yes, yes, dearly, dearly beloved, Prince, dearly and, beloved. Yes, Prince. Oh. <laughs> Welcome to Minnesota, one, Michael. I mean, oh, you, uh, thank you. you know thank your you. stuff, man. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Um, I, I've been asked, you know, how long have I been holding on to that? Because yeah. it's no, no secret, you know, you play by play announcers. You, you, know, you want to be entertaining. You want to have fun sure. with the game and have calls for players or whatnot. It was probably two weeks prior to that game that I was, I may have been at a concert and they were playing music right. just to kind of set the mood before things got rolling and they played it. And I, and I, I remember going, hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, that's what you do. And so that game, so the, the, and he had been kind of struggling at that point. Yep. So I didn't know if I would get an opportunity to use it. You don't want to waste it in the first quarter no. or, or anything like that. You want to kind of hang on to that one. And that next game, Madison Square Garden, Spike Lee, right. I mean, this the uh, the aura of the building and i think he was eight for eight yeah he was he didn't miss a game. three man i was he didn't miss a three yeah. and i i could have used it after he was five for five yeah you know six for six seven for seven but that big shot you know in that moment and it just kind of popped into my head as a reminder um, as he was letting it loose and it was it was it was perfect it was beautiful. You know, it was good, things to hope for. good discipline on your part you know, you're, it's, you're a young guy, obnoxiously young. You're hired at 39. You know, the cutoff, a friend of mine's 41 and he, he says, nobody under 41 knows who you are, Craig. But I think you, you may be, maybe somebody told you who I was. No, that's not true. That's not true. But anyway, <laughs> um, no, that was good. That's not true. And, and uh, did you didn't go up to touring and shoot around and say, man, I got this, you got to make a big shot in the fourth. Cause I got this great call. <laughs> You know, you know, us announcers are, I, I always get nervous about walking up to players and, and asking them about, you know, details on the game or what I've got, because I feel like I'm a jinx. Oh yeah. So if I tell Prince, yeah. Hey, look, I've got one in the chamber. Needs you to have a big game. <laughs> in my mind, guaranteed he's going 0 for 11. That exactly. Night. Guaranteed. <laughs> That's funny. Guaranteed. <laughs> okay. So here's the, uh, here's the last one. Now this is it's kind of a simple one that has been around for a long time, but it's always satisfying. Whenever a guy, like if they're playing out here at, at Staples, if D'Lo, who's now a Laker, if he hits a, a three, but it's a deep three, you say from nearby Pasadena, you know, from nearby, from, oh, I, I might say straight out of Compton because I'm fun, from, from Hancock <laughs> Park. But you did something, and you don't know this. So I moved to Minnesota right before kindergarten. Um, I was born in Kansas City. My dad was born in Queens, but he grew up in Teaneck, New Jersey, and he went to uh, Teaneck High in Rutgers, ironically the same high school and college of David Stern. And then he took a transfer to Hastings, Minnesota. And, <laughs> and we laughed at the people growing up. There's this town of 12,000. The rich people lived in Edina. So I've always made fun of Edina. So early this year, Michael Grady, the new play-by-play -play man, Ant pulls up deep three from Edina. Why, why did you say Edina? It made me laugh so hard. You know, when you, when you move to a uh, new place, and I, 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 I'm sure you've experienced this when you've gone to different places or whatnot, you get a, uh, a lay of the land of the different neighborhoods, 
and inevitably you're going to mispronounce one of the neighborhoods. Oh, okay. I'm from I'm from Indianapolis, and there's Carmel, Indiana, and a lot of people go Carmel. Go, no, it's Carmel. And in other places, it might be different. Yeah. You know, when I moved to New York, there were so many different neighborhoods. You got to get the pronunciation right. And then if you and then if you're in conversation with someone and you say it right, yeah, it's like oh he's He's one of us now. You said it right. right. You know, um, I mean, I realized uh, on Long Island versus in Long Island, like it's on Long Island, there's different ways that yep. you need to say it or whatnot. So Minnesota, one of my first trips to a neighborhood was through Adina. And I remember saying someone, you know, uh, you know, I went to uh, Adina, I was looking at homes in Adina and they were like, yeah, yeah. Adina. Yeah. And so that always, that just kind of stuck in my yeah. mind. And so it was, it was for me, uh, when that moment came, it was, I, c I can't say something basic, like any, yeah. anybody can say Minnetonka, right. but I, <laughs> I just want to show everybody the new guy knows how to say. Oh, it was classic Edina. because of my history with the, I just, we just all Edina. That's where all the precious that's people so live, all the rich people. You probably live there now. No, I, you live downtown or where do you live? I am, I am downtown. I am downtown. So I'll, I'll settle into a neighborhood. Uh, this off season, but um, I, I uh, ended up just wanting to be close to the arena yeah. within walking distance, and so um, so I didn't have to fuss with driving in snow or anything like that. So, I'm gonna, so, uh, yeah. so I, I like it. I want to. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with. I have my notes here. I'm gonna go to Indiana, but come back to Minnesota. But you grew up there, which is a big hoop state. By the way, you ever been to uh, St. Elmo's Steakhouse and had the shrimp cocktail? Oh, man. That's a little a lot of horseradish. Yes. I was there yes, for a final yes. four. That was great. Um, did you play ball? Did you play sports? I did. My um uh early in my high school years, I was a uh, playing basketball, diehard basketball guy. I also played football a little bit of wide undersized wide receiver. Um, but junior year gave it gave it all up because that was the first year that students could participate in the radio and oh. TV program at my high school. Cool. So, um, yeah, my voice changed right around that time. I knew I loved sports. Oh, yeah. Realized that the NBA and NFL probably, you know, isn't for me. But more than anything, I just really enjoyed being able to tell stories yeah. and be behind the microphone and laugh and be an authority on a subject. And right. that just really, really appealed to me. I think, I think my favorite people in the world are, are comedy writers and, and broadcasters because I I relate to both of them. <laughs> When you said your voice changed, because you have the pipes, but of course you have more than that because you're very clever, which I'm impressed with. And I do, I can also tell you know the game because of some of the insights you'll say during the game. But when your voice changed, you're, you're not too young. You know Barry White, right? Obviously. You, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So I actually was one of those guys in the suburb that, you know, I listened to Barry White and Earth, Wind, and Fire, but. I, I saw an interview with him once and he said, oh, I don't know. I was 12 and I just woke up and there it was. And my mom was like, whoa, <laughs> what's that? I mean, his voice just changed. Now, you're not, you're not quite in the Barry White range, which would be out of control, no. but you have a really good voice. When, when did it change? You said in high school or when? Uh, yes, I started. I, I've, I've, um, I've said this. Uh, before. I can't remember the day it changed or anything right. like that, but, the, but it stood out to me. My first job was at 16 years old and I was working at Taco Bell and sometimes I was working on the line yeah. and sometimes I was working the drive through Oh boy. And I would say, welcome to Taco Bell. Can I take your order? And <laughs> so many people would say, um, uh, I'll have a Taco Supreme. And by the way, you have a great voice. <laughs> <laughs> great Mr. Voice. FM is taking my order. Then, yes. And then they'd pull up to the window and see that I was a kid and just, and oh, just be that. flabbergasted. So, um, that kind of, um, kind of planted a seed that, okay, I already have, the interest is already there. Right. And now I feel like I have a little bit of an advantage now because there's something developing. I don't know what's going on here, but there's something developing. Yeah. It's a, it's a gift that, uh, some people have. I, when I played ball, I knew I wasn't going to be good enough to play in the NBA. My dad told me that at a very early age, maybe too early. <laughs> but I thought I didn't want to coach because of the winning and losing. And I thought, you know, no being a play-by-play -play man, and I did it a little bit in the old CBA. I was down in the Savannah Spirits in Savannah, Georgia, but I don't have the pipes and my voice will not last four quarters. And I, and I always wonder, I mean, if you get a little flu or a little cold, 
what do you just go hot tea or hot water and lemon or how do you handle that? I, one of the first things I did, because um, one of the guys that I grew up listening to, Mark Boyle, yeah. uh, play-by-play -play voice for the Indiana Pacers, there was a Pacers game against the Nets years ago, it may have been 2002, and it went into double overtime. And Mark lost his voice after the, after regulation. Wow. And it got, and after the first overtime, he said on air, like, if, if this goes to another overtime, I'm done. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's, there's just no chance. So. I've always been aware of the fact that um, that you, you just really need to take care of your voice. Yeah. And these last handful of years, I've been doing sideline and mixing in play-by-play -play for different outlets for the Nets and NBA TV or whatnot. And so knowing that I was going to do a full 82, uh, CK, I, um, I hired for a month a voice pathologist. Oh. And she got me hip to um, having body temperature water with honey and lemon. And I am a nerd. You will not <laughs> catch me without my Yeti mug yeah. with, with the uh, the hot water, lemon, and honey in it. That's um, good. I do a nasal rinse in each morning to make sure that I'm clearing the sinuses right. and keeping everything clean. Um, so I have been on top of They're it. Good and, for you. Um, and it's been a good. It's been a good year. Inevitably, it'll happen. Sure, you know, something will come around. And the players have been sick the last few weeks, as, I you, know. as you know. I heard so you Jim guys. And I, I heard. I heard you and Jim Pete giggling that you it didn't get to the broadcast team. Thank God. <laughs> That's what you guys were saying. Uh, no, you weren't giggling. You were very professional. Um, so, so you were. Uh, I, I read something. I didn't do a lot of research. I just like asking questions and going on instinct. But yeah. I did see what 2016 Indiana Broadcaster of the Year. So you weren't at you yes. weren't at the Nets yet. You were with the Pacers, or where were you doing? Yes, so I was with the Pace. I was with so for a three year period in Indiana, I was doing a midday sports talk show. I was the sports anchor for the uh, local ABC affiliate, and I was the PA announcer for the Indiana Pacers. Oh, wow. so a tip, typical day is I would you know wake up, I would do a radio show from ten to noon. I would go to the TV station, get ready for the five o'clock and six o'clock sportscast. If there was a home Pacers game, I would do the sports cast at six o'clock from the arena, then take my wow. seat, do the game, and then after the game, head back to the TV station and hurry up to prepare the 11 o'clock sports cast. So I did that for a three year period before the Nets came calling. And in 2016, it was really nice. They uh, recognized me for you know, the work that I was doing. That's a little obsessive. That's not well-rounded. That's have, putting your career first and look where it got you. <laughs> no, I, you know, Jay Leno, With he, Jay Leno was a workaholic and he would do the tonight show and get on a private plane and then go to stand up in Vegas afterwards. But it sounds uh -huh. like you sound, uh, you're, you've slowed down a little, but you're You got a great gig now. So when you were in Brooklyn, you were the sideline guy, I guess, uh, because I, uh, I watched the league pass. I remember when uh, Michelle Beadle was with the Nets, but um, mm. my guy is there, Ian Eagle. <laughs> he's, I mean, he's as funny as they get, right? He's and and he, it, it's it's in the family tree, right? Yeah. Uh, so his his father was a, um, a stand up yeah. comedian, and and it's just that it's just the timing that you just can't teach, yep. right? Yep. And it comes out in a broadcast. And so he's on top of it when it comes to the play-by-play -play and the commentary of the storytelling. And then he drops these jewels in the broadcast that just no one else can, right. can duplicate in, in the game. Yeah. So he is, he is tremendous. He's just funny. The way he talks, he goes, <laughs> yeah, I dapped KD in warmups. It's going to, he's going to be hot tonight. Like he just says these different <laughs> bro hug. He says bro hug. He does all this crazy stuff. He's great. <laughs> So back to Minnesota, I just wanted to say, I grew up there. I don't get back as much as I want to. I don't like flying, but you're more, in some ways, more Minnesotan than I am because, Michael, I would never do the polar plunge in a million years. <laughs> never. We can't get you no, out there. I'll, I'll, I'll donate money to the charity, but <laughs> so what is, what is that? It's, 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 you jump in the freezing, no. uh, but, but no one was in shorts and bare chested, were they? No, absolutely. Really? Absolutely. Oh. Um, uh, bikinis, swimsuits, uh, shirtless. Wow. It was all types of, all types of outfits, you know, costumes and things like that. And I, <laughs> I Googled 
can you die yeah. from jumping freezing water? Yeah, heart attack. <laughs> and my heart stopped. Yeah, uh, from jumping in the freezing water. So I again, I don't, I don't do cold at all. I don't. I, it sounds crazy because I'm I'm living in Minnesota now. Um, but you know, some people will go outside and will dress cute. You know, I have friends who come out and they'll have a pea coat in Minnesota, and I'll say, no, you have to dress ugly if right. you want to stay warm. Right. You know, so I've got big cold yeah. hat, ski mask, yeah. all that type of stuff, and I'm fine. The thought of jumping in freezing water, I was, um, I was pressured. I was pressured. It was pure pressure. Jim P. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and the entire Valley team got on me about it. They stayed on me. Jim's lovely wife, Tika, stayed on me about it. And um, then they added the charity component to it. And so I agreed to do it. And I was legit shook up about it, uh, Craig. I really, I really was. And it wasn't until I hit the water. I was wearing a wetsuit, yep, by the yep. way. They, they, they told me it was going to be 40 degrees in March. It was 30 degrees and snowing. So I said, I'm wearing a wetsuit. Uh, and so when I hit the water, though, I realized that it wasn't that bad. I still hurried like hell to get yeah, out of the yeah. water. I saw the video. But yeah. Once I, but once I was in it, I, oh, okay, it wasn't that bad. Right. And then I was, two seconds later, I was in the heated tent. Yeah. And I was like, it's over? So I was really psyching myself. Yeah, out. yeah. Yeah, it scares <laughs> me. I, I, um, you know, I grew up there. I didn't know how cold it was. I didn't know about California. I was a kid building snowmans. I even played hockey. And, <laughs> but I'm just telling somebody when I'm cold, I, I, it's painful when it's hot. Like I have a place out in the desert near Palm Springs. It's 120 degrees. You get out of the air conditioned car and you walk to the restaurant and you're kind of laughing. I'm laughing. I go, this is like a sauna, but I'm laughing. <laughs> I'm not pain. I'm not in pain. I'm, 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 I'm in a sauna, but the cold, <laughs> especially the wind. Oh, oh the wind. I yeah. just can't handle that. And that's the thing in the New York, New York, New Jersey area, area, um, the wind is brutal. Yeah. Um, in Minnesota, it can be still and it's just cold yeah. and that's tough too, but a little bit bearable. But, but when you add the wind to it. Yeah. This won't leave the room, but does, has your wife privately said, this is ridiculous. I'm staying in, you know, in Brooklyn or somewhere <laughs> does she, what does she say about Minnesota? She was. She is, um, she is about people and connections. And so I can say that honestly, okay. the way that the community and the people around the team, the tele, uh, the television side yeah. and the team side have embraced her. It makes her feel warm. It makes her feel like family. And it is a big part of why, um, she's on board and she's the one that pushed me to take the job in the first oh, place. Oh, cool. That said, um, she's not yeah, there. No, she's not living there. Me. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> she'll be there next season. She'll be there next season. Uh, that's <laughs> and I'm funny. looking forward to that. Well, well, what are your initial <laughs> thoughts? Cause it is, I am so proud to have grown up there and I, I kind of ad nauseum tell people, especially my neighbor, he says that once a week, you tell me you had a happy childhood. Well, I did. Of course, my dad was very funny, but I, it was comedy and basketball, but I'm so proud of being from the state of Minnesota, and I'm obsessed with, obviously, the Timberwolves and the Vikings, what is, what is your thought on the community? They probably treat you like royalty anyways, because you're the voice of the wolves. Yeah, they've been, I mean, they've been super welcoming. And one of the things that, you know, I, I was asked all the time about, you know, being the new guy and stepping in someone else's shoes and the way that whole thing ended. And um, there was a lot of, you know, passion from the fan base, given the, the situation. and. Um, that told me right away that this is a passionate fan base that they love their yeah. people. And so, um, so I didn't, I never really felt any pressure stepping in, you know, um, you know, I, I, I stepped into the, sh the shoes and different roles and being in New York in front of that audience and stepping out of my comfort zone from Indiana. You know, I've had a lot of little twists and turns in my career. The one thing that gave me peace is that I know how much I, love the game and how much I love people. Mm -hmm. And if you're a diehard Minnesota Timberwolves fan and you can tell that I'm passionate about the game that I'm calling and want to see the team be successful, well, why, you know, why wouldn't you connect? Why wouldn't you connect? You yeah. know, we all speak the same language and that's the beautiful thing about sports. And so, and that, that happened, you know, over a short period of time. And I really, and I really appreciate that. So, I just, I just love how passionate the fan base is, how much they care. 
They certainly have been through a lot, and mm. I've certainly grown to understand yeah. that over the uh, over the course of the season. Um, but I couldn't be more appreciative to the way folks have um, embraced me. Yeah. you know, in my first season. Well, you, and, yes, um, you're. I'm glad they did that because I'm I'm away from it. Like uh, my friend John Krasinski, he tells me different things about the team. How they we're, we're going to get into some Timberwolves things. We're going to get into the Rudy trade. You know, we'll, we'll get into this stuff, but I, I'm glad that they've embraced you because you're very talented, which is what, you know, that's what I'm so impressed with. And I can tell that you care. And I know that you were happy last night that they beat your old team. <laughs> I could joke that you bet you made some money off that game, but I can't say that because that's not, yeah, we don't say that stuff. Do you care, Michael Grady, yet? Do you care yet about the Minnesota Vikings? I... Do, yeah, I do. I do. You're going to love I, them um, in a few years. You, 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 yes, once you're yes. there, they're fun. I mean, what do you think yeah. of Jefferson? Are you blown away by JJ, Justin Jefferson? Completely, completely blown away. And again, I, so I grew up a Colts fan and growing up in Indianapolis and back with, you know, Jim Harbaugh and, and, and then of course on to Peyton Manning or whatnot. And, and so I've always been a, a big, um, uh, Colts fan. The when I moved to New York, folks asked, "Am I going to embrace the the um, Jets or the Giants?" The, the Jets or the Giants. And one of my good friends that I developed out, uh, I developed a relationship out there. He's a Jets fan, so I said, "I'm going to give the Jets a try." Right. And the same week that I said I'm going to cheer for the Jets, Sam Darnold came down with mono, oh, yeah. and the t- the team just yeah. w- was just garbage the entire season. Right. I said, uh, bro, I don't think this is for me. <laughs> so I, I, I just stayed a Colts fan from afar. Now in Minnesota, and especially with this role now, um, I really have taken embracing the community. To heart. Yeah, I'm always going to be a Colts fan, but um, seeing the way that the, the community turns purple. Oh, yeah. And how diehard they are. And I'll tell you this. I think I put this on social media. I went to the Colts Vikings game. Yeah. Season, and the Colts were <laughs> rushing Minnesota early and I'll be in the press box and I'm feeling good. Things are great. And then Minnesota goes on that epic yep. come from behind victory. And on one hand, it was cold. So where are you going to go? But I was impressed with how many fans at halftime stayed in the building. Yeah. The assumption is that, oh, well, you're getting your, you know, you're getting your ass kicked. You, you're going to exit and you're going to be out of there or whatever. Maybe head home early, have dinner. But nobody, it just seemed like nobody left. And as the game was coming to an end and they had an opportunity to win the game, the place was electric. And I have so much respect for the fan base and the way that they were um, riding for their team the way that they did. Yeah. Um, but going to uh, Jeff, just Jefferson, he has had so many plays where you said, where I said an expletive or just, oh my God, yep. or just does things. He's so athletic, tremendous hands. Yep. He's so impressive. And I, I, again, I came up watching Marvin Harrison, mm-hmm. who a lot of people don't remember or did, that just name doesn't ring a bell today. But Marvin Harrison was incredible. Yeah. Um, had amazing hands, was a great um, wide receiver for the Colts and one of the best um, of all time. And these guys now just look like cheat codes to me. It's, it's unreal. Yeah. The, uh, so I followed them. I'm a little older than you, but I followed them since 72. Chuck Foreman, we've always been good. Chuck Foreman was my favorite player. And then there was a guy named Anthony Carter, not Chris Carter, but Anthony Carter. And I love Diggsy, yeah. Stefan Diggs. My favorite player is hit, the hitman, Harrison Smith. But I got to tell you something, just one more Viking thing. I don't know if we'll ever win a Super Bowl, but we've always been good. Uh, you were at that game. There's a player, he's a run, he's Dalvin Cook. So Dalvin, we may or may not keep keep him on the team. I just love him so much. And I tell people, oh, fine, I know how the running back has a short career, whatever, whatever, and he makes money. Whoever we replace, they're not going to be able to break it the way he breaks it. <laughs> that screen pass, <laughs> that screen pass. Yeah. I just love watching Dalvin. I don't understand how he does it. He has an instinct, and he did this in college. His feet, I, I just don't get how how gifted he is. Are, do you like Dalvin? Yeah, I, I do. I do. And, you know, it's funny nowadays you get to know people um, and players based off of uh, fantasy teams. Yeah. And I haven't played fantasy the last couple of years, but my stepson is a diehard sports fan. And he had Dalvin Cook um, on his team uh, a couple of, maybe a couple of seasons ago. And I tell you, we were watching Dalvin Cook highlights and the things that he was doing yeah. uh, Sunday after Sunday. So 
uh, real impressed with his ability. It is a shame nowadays how um, how we look at running backs because yep. there was a there was a time where you would give it to him thirty five, yep. you know, forty times, yeah. and, and feel like you got to give it to him some more. Now you know a guy may get it, you know, fifteen times a game, and after three years, it's like, oh, he's damaged goods. So I know. Let him go. I know. So it's a it's a different it's a different day, and that's a, that's a shame. But no, Dalvin Dalvin, absolute beast at his peak. Before we get to the Wolves, let me just ask you, since you've been there, there's a couple restaurants. Tell me if you've been there. I can, You can mention my name. Get a free drink. Get a free oh, bottle I mean, of wine. Let me write this down. FEMA's. Man. You've been to FEMA's? Yes. Yes. Um, one of the few spots down. It's, I mean, it's amazing, but it's also one of the few spots downtown that stays open after games. Yeah. With uh, us broadcasters really appreciate. We want to be able to get a good meal and not feel like we're going to get kicked out after 15 minutes. So, uh, I have not met, uh, so David Fema, uh, Eli, well, uh, Eli. Dave. Yeah. Eli, uh, Eli has been, you know, terrific. I'm um, just haven't had the uh, pleasure of meeting uh, Dave just yet. Manny's heard of it. Famous steakhouse. Manny's, There's yes, Manny's yes. and Murray's. Yes. They're two steakhouse. Yeah, that's, that's what was, that's what, that was the hesitation yeah. on my part. Cause I pass Murray's right. every time I go to the arena for a game. I have not been to Manny's. I know, but I do know that, um, every team that flies in yeah. for a game against the Timberwolves, they're either going to FEMA's or Manny's. Right. Most of them. Billy's Sushi. Billy's Sushi. Yes. Billy, <laughs> Billy's Sushi. I, um, uh, I love Billy. So I, I think I was at a barbershop one time and I was someone else, somewhere else. And they said, you know, have you been to Billy's Sushi yet? Yeah. And I said, no, it's like, you've got to go introduce yourself. You got to, you know, you got to meet them. So my sister was in town. My wife was in town. This is before our first home game for the Timberwolves this season. And so we go into Billy Sushi and I tell the uh, lovely waitress, I said, is Billy around? Can he, you know, slip to introduce myself or whatever. And so uh, Billy comes over. I introduce myself. He sits down and he doesn't get up for three hours. <laughs> uh, we were the last, we were the last people oh, in his spot. Um, that's great. The sushi, the food was so good. But his personality is, yeah. is just uh, infectious and great enthusiasm. Big Timberwolves fan. Oh, huge. Um, travels to games. We saw him at Madison Square Garden. Yeah. And lovely family. But food is tremendous. Yeah, I, got, I have a friend, uh, Charlie Swanson, and he introduces me to all these people. And he gets me courtside seats when I come out. And uh, Billy Sushi is special. I'm going to give you one that you probably don't know. And this is what's weird. Like my friend Charlie and the other guys, they just stay in Minneapolis. And my dad worked in St. Paul, so I like St. Paul. It's got I like the architecture. There's a French restaurant called Meritage. It's in the Hams building. And whenever I'm in town, I go there. But uh, you might not head over much to St. Paul, but check it out at some point. You'll enjoy, I, you'll enjoy it. I absolutely will. And I'm going to expand um, the restaurants that I've been able to go to, Craig, because you know, coming from New York, I didn't have a car, didn't need a car. Yeah. And so when I came here, I wasn't necessarily in a rush. Yeah. And so Jim Pete and I essentially had a bet. Could I make it through an entire season without a car? And I've made it through the entire season Ooh. without or without a car. So um, the season's about to end. And so the bet's over and I'm going to get a car. Uh, and, yeah. nap, and I'm going to navigate and hit some spots that I, I just have not been able to uh, hit just what yet. Do you, do, you, do you Uber or take the skywalks to the game or what do you do? Uh, you know what? I just power through. You oh, know, you the walk? Skyway, oh. The Skyway will add an extra 15 minutes to the walk. Yeah. And so I say, do I just want to put this, again, big ugly coat on right. and power walk for six minutes or whatever okay. it is? Or do I want to go through the Skyway? So no, I just, uh, the, the coldest that I've walked through was negative 16 this season. Ooh. That was the boldest, so. I think I, I remember that ready. game. You were shivering in the first quarter. I, <laughs> yeah. You were still kind of whiny. Um, still. <laughs> okay, here we go, man. So, Finchie said we can beat anybody and lose to anybody. You you know everything, man. What's the problem? What is the deal? I, I'll tell you the good news. We can beat anybody, so if we get into the playoffs, which I'm hoping we do, we won't have to play any of the bad teams. We'll be playing a great team, and it'll bring out the best in us. But why do you think – I think there have been 10 losses to you know Pistons, Rockets, obviously Portland. What do you think it is? I, I think it's a, a, little, bit of, uh, a little bit of immaturity. 
I think, um, and immaturity in the sense I'm going to mix it with ego, Craig, because Finch said this multiple times at the beginning of the season that maybe we think we're better than what we actually are. Mm -hmm. And in this league, if you're a great team, then there's a responsibility to prove it every single night. Yeah. And to take nights off when you're facing a team that nobody would even want to play with in 2K. Um, like you can't, you know, you can't do that. Like nobody wants to play with the Detroit Pistons on 2K. Right. Um, uh, <laughs> or the Houston, like nobody right. is choosing those teams. So to have to play, you know, a 48 minute game against these teams, you can understand the human side of, oh, okay, like I'm not going to go all out as if I'm playing against LeBron. Right. But there is a maturity that comes with, I need to take care of business because you know what it can mean at the end of the season. So the Timberwolves right now, you know, toward the end of the season, battling for play and positioning. But if they had beaten Houston, if they had beaten the Detroits, if they had beaten the Charlotte Hornets, if they had beaten the Portland Trail Blazers, we could be talking about a four seed. I know. We could be talking about first right on home court advantage in the playoffs. Yeah. So it, it's, um, it, yeah. it's one of those things where I'm a, I'm a positive guy. I'm optimistic. I mean, we played well last year in the series against Memphis. We won the first game, but winning, winning and closing out is is a different thing. We haven't reached that yet. But I really want to get in the first round. I really want to get to the playoffs this year, whether it's Denver or or Phoenix or Memphis. Ex- excuse me, the Kings, Sacramento, uh, because I know we can compete with them, and I and I just want to see us. I, even last night, I enjoyed watching Cat and Ant kind of take turns and I want to get that chemistry going, but I, I, I know something good, good is happening. We've had two good years of 40 wins and I've been, you know, following the team since 1989. One day I'll get gray hair, but I don't have it yet. But, um, <laughs> what do you think of Ant? Cause I, I wanted, we all wanted him to take the leap and I think he did take the leap this year. Yes. And you, you hate to see the leap come at the result of an injury but i don't know that we would have seen this leap had towns been healthy the entire season yeah we certainly would have seen flashes and moments and things like that that make us go wow the potential is there right but the type of leap that he made this season and the way that he helped carry the team um uh through the 52 game stretch that towns was out really lets you know and reminds you about, okay, this kid's really special. Yeah. We can add more things to his plate. Um, we don't want to put a ceiling on what his potential is. And the thing that I, that I, I, I love about him is that of course, family is important in, in his number one, but basketball is all that matters yeah. you know, to him yeah. and competing and battling. It's yeah. not being a celebrity. It's not, right. you know, being a, a fashion icon or anything like right. that, uh, or being a social media influencer. It's I want to, um, I want to beat you on the basketball court. Yeah, I want to battle. I want to compete with you. I want to get better at my craft. I want to whatever it may be. It's about you know the game. Right. And guys like that are easy to follow. Um, when you have other like-minded players um, on the roster. And even if you're not a like-minded player, but you see the way that he's competing and battling, yeah. it just makes you want to want to follow his lead. And so he's still figuring out how to be a leader. Um, he's still um, figuring out how to take command of a game um, over the course of an entire game. But he has shown us so much this season that really has to make you salivate yeah. as, a, as a Timberwolves fan. The other thing is the Wolves have had you know they've had some talent but they've for the last few years even when Thibodeau was there they just they weren't great on defense and now with Jaden and Anthony Edwards plays really good on the ball defense I just think I think that's wonderful it's inspiring I wanted to ask you I don't want to get you into trouble that's not why I'm here (laughs) so I I'm one of those guys that I 
I like Cat because, you know, he, he, we drafted him, and I said, I can't believe this guy. He's shooting 54%. First three years, 54% from the floor. What a shooter. What a He can drive. He can left hand, right hand. I know he's quirky. <laughs> Does he bother you? I guess you can't answer that. What are, what are the people? <laughs> I mean, I, 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 like that, I like that he's not doing this. Well, he might be doing the silly reach-in fouls or the leg kick out on the threes but what are your thoughts on cat because he looked good last night didn't he he did and when he is just locked in on competing and whatever his team needs and is blocking out everything else right um uh the talk after the you know the portland game was was he offended about coach saying that the ball was getting too sticky when he was on the court and so he goes out against Portland and only has three shot attempts and I know he was in foul trouble but that was at that point the most important game of the season um these last 10 15 games every every game has been the most important game of the yeah. season and that was a, a big game against Portland even though they weren't playing anybody it's another win, which is important, but it's also a Western Conference win, mm -hmm. which plays into the whole tiebreaker scenarios. Yeah. You know, when you when if you finish with the same record yeah. as one of the teams you're fighting against. So it was the biggest game of the season at that point, and it's unfortunate he only got three shots up. So so tactful, it, it, so it was measured and tactful. The politician, no, <laughs> uh, 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 but he was different against um, the very next game. Yeah. You know, against Brooklyn. Yeah, it was and good. And it was just about the game, just about getting a W. He was aggressive on the rebounds. And when you see that cat, you're saying, okay. All right. I'm going to have a little fun here. This is just for me to do. You, I, I do this sometimes. Do you have a favorite player on the Timberwolves? And I'm, I'm exaggerating that he's my favorite player, but man, he's been special this year. I didn't anticipate it. I didn't anticipate this happening. You know who I'm talking about? The guy who's Super been special this guy. the guy who's been special this year. We didn't no one knew this was gonna happen. Slow mo. <laughs> slow mo. Yes, yes. I mean, this guy, you gotta realize when I played, I was you know how Paul Pierce moves at his own speed? I remember yes. Paul Pierce half court at the Nuggets, dunked on one of their big men, Nene or somebody, and Scott <laughs> Hastings said, Takes him a week and a half to get there, but then he quick dunked on the, you know, over the guy. But I love I I moved at my own speed. Luca moves at his own speed. So slow mo, yes. it's just hilarious how yes. he just goes down there and then throws up a floater or dumps it to Rudy. <laughs> He's fun to watch, right? There, there's something appealing. Now I understand that he's you know six nine and and many of us are not that tall. Um, but there's something appealing about a guy who moves at a pace and has moves in his arsenal that you feel you can do at lifetime fit. You know, Anthony Edwards, there's no way right. I can do some of the things that Anthony Edwards right. does on the court. But Kyle Anderson, I can do, I can do, right. I can oh. probably do some of the things. It's, it's an old man game. I love it when you say uh -oh, it. Every time so he drives, you go, here, old man game. Oh. <laughs> yes, yes. Because oh. we've, we've all played against that guy in Indianapolis that would go to the um, uh, local YMCA. And it was, there would always be this old guy <laughs> who would put these moves on you that were fundamental, basic moves, yeah. and you couldn't stop it. And then he would let you know about it oh, afterwards. That's great. You know, so, I, so uh, Kyle is, is very similar right. in that regard. And he has saved the team in many ways, as you know, yeah. this season. So he's, he's certainly been one of my favorites. Um, I, I've said this uh, from the get-go that I knew coming in that I was pounds, of course. Right. And Anthony Edwards is excited about seeing part of the appeal about taking the job as being able to follow his blossoming career. Jada McDaniels, I was excited to see. But the guy who stood out to me from day one in training camp was Nas Reed. Oh. And he was, I, got, I, I, I knew about him, but I didn't know about him. Yeah, and I knew he had games, yeah, he, but in but against his teammates, he was killing them in training camp. He's locking yeah. shots, he's he, dunking on guys. He's interesting because um, 
he he wasn't drafted and he dunks well and he has a nice you know a nice form on his three pointer it's interesting he's very mobile handles the ball well and my brother loves him and i'm like yeah he's i think he's inconsistent i don't know if he how much he rebounds he does block shots well he's had a great year it's very unfortunate very unfortunate he got hurt yes. but i yes. am surprised i this year he he loves his crossover, but he he finishes well at the rim off glass, left hand, right hand. It's like yes. so he's he's better than I thought he'd be. Um, because I thought sometimes he'd just throw up shots, spin shots, left handed shots, but he's I mean, he he was on a roll before he got hurt. Um, yeah. Before I forget, I just have to ask you quickly because I got a lot, a couple more things here. What do you? I'm not going to tell you my thoughts until I hear yours. What do you think of the Rudy <laughs> trade? What do you think of the Rudy trade? <laughs> I, um, I, I, you know, I, and I'm not, I'm not BSing you here. I always step into a situation where with the, with this, a spirit of optimism, you know, if you will, uh, my initial thought at the deal was mm, that's a lot to give up mm -hmm. for Rudy Gobert. And then, um, and then you, the more you think about it and you think about how he can fit and the league is going one way, this is obviously going another direction and towns being a solid three point shooter and you know, how can they play off of each other and make this work? And could they have enough time to make this work? How many games would it take to see it, um, start to blossom? And they just were never given that opportunity. Right. Um, and even now, uh, mm -hmm. with this small sample size, um, leading to the end of the regular season and into, you know, what the team hopes is a postseason run. We're still not getting a strong enough right. sample size, so it's unfortunate. I thought the Conley trade was massive because with a player like that, you need to know how to utilize him. He's not Shaq. He's not someone you're going to give the ball to in the post and just watch him go to work yeah. and get easy buckets. You have to know how to get him the basketball right. and right. keep them involved. And if he's engaged on the offensive end, then he's going to be locked in on the defensive side of the ball. Everybody has feelings. Right. If they don't feel involved on one end, well, it's like in eh, right, on, right. on the defensive side of the ball. So I, I feel like Conley and um, Anderson have been huge in terms of getting Rudy involved, keeping him right. aggressive and engaged. And we've seen flashes since the All Star break that make you go, "Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah, okay. I don't even care what Walker Kessler's doing. Right? You know? Yeah. I, I I've been I've been impressed lately. I actually it didn't bother me except for the compensation i thought we gave up too much i was fired up and i still am because i think he does things defensively that people don't even know about he did it last night at the rim i mean he just alters shots and and again the wolves have not been great defensively and cat can't do everything underneath but they used to they were talking about this for a few years they were talking about getting miles turner to play with cat and then rudy gobert becomes available and i'm like go ahead and do it again the compensation i thought was a little too it was silly but we kept Jaden mcdaniels so i i i like i like rudy and he i just think it really helps and i love what finch he did last night you know he can sit at the end if it's a smaller lineup make that adjustment yes. but rudy does things that are just they really cause a problem for the other team. So I'm pleased. I'm pleased with it. I'm not as negative as other people are about it. Yeah. And the three time defensive player of the year. And it's again, it's just how is he utilized? Right. Um, and you can have something that's extremely valuable, name the item. But if you don't know how to use it, right. then it serves no purpose. So they have a special player in Rudy and they figured out how to get him involved on the offensive end and then defensively. There's going to be breakdowns here or there, but you're seeing something to where you say, okay, no, this is, right. this is why he's here. And you brought up earlier the defensive potential on the perimeter yeah. of McDaniels and, um, and Edwards yeah. and seeing that continue to grow with the three-time defensive player of the year. There's a lot of defensive potential in the future for this group. Uh, one more Wolves thing, and then we're going to go to your top five movies. I hope you're not feeling too much pressure. Uh, much I, pressure. I don't like flying. Um, uh, I know there's a lot of traveling in the NBA. I want to know what the plane rides are like, and I want to know if it gets a little crazy after a win, does Luca Garza take off his shirt and become Kirko Chains? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, what's it like on the, after a win when the Wolves are flying home? 
<laughs> By the way, if this was earlier in the season when Luca was getting minutes, I might have to steal that one from you. Yeah. <laughs> Kirk Coach James. And- <laughs> it's like our, our guy. Uh, yeah, Kirk. I, I, I love those. I love those. Um, I love those shots from the Vikings and, and just the camaraderie and how excited everything was. And now you got me imagining Luca <laughs> with, 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 with the ice with the ice on. Um, but uh, when I was. I'll make this quick. When I was in Indiana, one of the things I hated most as PA announcer was coming home, was walking out of the building after a loss. It's like a deflating feeling mm-hmm. and just that, just the image of fans and people with face paint yeah. and they're walking sadly to their car after a loss. I just, I just hated that feeling. And then when I started working with teams and flying with teams, I just started to hate the plane rides after loss. Uh, the flip side to that, um, to your question, after a win and um, big wins and the good feelings and there's no um, debauchery, <laughs> debauchery, anything like that on the planes, but the it's it's more chatty, right. lively. Right. Um, uh, people talk to you who don't normally talk to you. <laughs> like, oh, Michael, like, oh, you know my name. <laughs> w. That's, that's funny. Type of thing. So that's it's funny. Just an, uh, it's just good. Vi- it's just good vibes, right. and uh, it's it's the best feeling to uh, get a to get a good win on the road and then hop on a plane. That's that's, that's just that's one great. of the best feelings. Ah, oh, good to hear. Yeah, I love the wolves. It, it does. It is. You got to be careful. I have to distance myself. Uh, be, you know, when they lose, I can't let it affect my. You know, like my friends say, when the Vikings win on Sunday, it's a great week. You can't. You can't let that affect you quite that much. Okay. <laughs> right. um, okay. You know what's the the thing with that? Real quick is the um is the social media component. I may have a good picture of Jim and I right um before a game that we may take before the game. Like, oh, this is this is beautiful. Yeah. And then the team loses a heartbreak when they go, can't post this. Exactly. I know. If I post it, they'll go, oh, I know. suck tonight. I know. <laughs> like, uh, all the I, comments. I comment when they win. I, I make a quick comment on Instagram at the Wolves when they win. And I think I've only done it once or twice when they've lost. I could do it when they lost, but it's like, I don't want to say, you know, I don't, I don't want to point out the problems. I have a direct line to Finchie if I have to tell him what's going on. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> All right, top five movies. Here we go. Top five movies. We do this with the first guest when people are on for the first time. Now, this is difficult. Well, and I'd like to take pressure off you by saying, give me your top five. Some people can only name four, but you can change it five minutes later. So if, if, if it's like you're struggling, you can change it later. But go ahead. Okay. Um, and I can't have a six man or anything like that. I can't. People, I can't go. people sneak them in by saying, I, I, you know, I really like this, but I'm going with this, you know. <laughs> this is going to be, and I, I have to say that this will change. I, um, uh, with, as you know, flying a lot or whatnot, you have to watch movies. You can read a book or you can watch films or you know, TV shows have been great, you know, the last handful of years. Um, but I'm a big movie guy mm-hmm. uh, since I was little. So some of these are going to be obvious and some of these are going to be, Random, but Godfather number one. Ooh, one of the top. The boy. I think it's top one or two on AFI. Go ahead. That's a great one. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. You better yes, name. You there's one that you better name, but I, I'm not going to pressure you. Go ahead. I'm I'm probably not going to say. Probably not going to say it at all. But um uh and and it's no particular order after this. Godfather is definitely number one, and the the rest of these are in no particular order. Um, the Matrix. Oh yeah, I mm-hmm. I find myself quoting things from the from the Matrix a lot, and I'm relating it to the game. Mm-hmm. When I was in Indiana, I used to call Paul George Neo before he, and then as he took his game to another level, it was like, up, oh, he realized, yeah, he's the one. And we're seeing the same thing now with Anthony Edwards. So the Matrix is always will always be a very good one of mine. I'm a big Christopher Nolan fan. Oh my lord! And so, okay, this I'm is going to be interesting because my brother loves Christopher Nolan, and there's one in particular one he loves. It was very long in the theater, but it's better to watch at home. But tell me what your favorite one is, Christopher Nolan. I have I, it's 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 Inception. It's okay. Inception. Now there's there's a number of them that I'm a, a big I'm a big fan of all of them. Interstellar of of them. is the my brother's Interstellar. Yeah, I love it, and yeah. Interstellar. Um, has aged with me mm-hmm. like fine wine. Yeah, I remember when I initially saw it, I was like, "Okay, that was good." And then every watch after that, yeah. I was like, "Oh, this is 
This is actually great. So this my great. brother told me about it. They, they said when it's in the theater, it's just too long. I, I have this mahogany <laughs> panel den and I have this couch and I was uh, with my lady friend, my significant other, we're watching it. I have a surround sound. And when they went through the wormhole, the entire den was shaking. It was so dramatic. <laughs> you know, the interstellar. A great scene. Yeah. A great scene. I love that one. Uh, so yes, yeah, so I could put any Christopher Nolan movie in there, but it would be Inception. Um, another one, I have to include a basketball movie in it. This is and, it. Uh, this my, is it. My favorite. This is it. Not who's Oh, it's, uh, Gene Hackman. It's, uh, this, I know. <laughs> I know. Very good movie and a rite of passage growing up in Indiana that you have to watch. Um, but it's, uh, actually he got gay. I have to include a Spike Lee, uh, Spike Lee movie in there. So uh, I'm going to go. He got game. Denzel Washington, um, another one of my favorite actors. And so I'll put I'll put it. I'll put that there. Um, and there's a great the opening scene to He Got Game, which is showing different basketball players um, around the country. Yeah. Shooting hoops with the music that's playing sure. uh, underneath. Just a, a great opening, just pure basketball scene. Um, and then at the end, I'm sorry, I'm going too long here. That's okay. But the final sequence toward the end, there was a basketball game between Ray Allen yeah. and Denzel Washington, his father in the film. And when I found out that they actually played a real basketball game, it wasn't scripted. That made me love the movie, mm -hmm. uh, even more. Denzel hit three buckets on Ray Allen, yeah, yeah. was talking his stuff. And I just, I just love that scene. Um, is this now that's now four, get, right? You got one more, right? I've got one, two, three, four. Yep. So this is five. And I've got a I've well oh man, I've got a couple more to mention. So I'm gonna say this because you mentioned being a um uh love comedy writers, and of course you yeah, I mean you're the man yourself, but I love this documentary called Dying Laughing. I've heard and of I'll, that. What is that? I'll I'll watch it every now and then. Um it's uh it has um they talk to a number of comedians from Seinfeld to Chris Rock to Kevin Hart to, I mean, so many different um, comedians about their early stages in their career at hole in the wall comedy clubs, their experience with hecklers, the worst heckler experience, and, and just kind of just follows the story of, you know, a, a comedian's life. And I, I feel like one of the most inspiring things that I've, <laughs> that I've seen I went to a comedy club in LA and it was, you know, an amateur night and you put your, write your name on a piece of paper, put it in a hat, pull the name out. Okay. Um, uh, John Wallace, you know, come up, you got five minutes or whatever it was. And John would come up and I'm, I'm in the crowd in this little bar. Like, Oh, John looks funny to me. And John was awful. He was uh, terrible. And everybody in the room, they, they didn't give courtesy laughs. Oh, if, they, if it was hey. legit funny, they yeah. gave you a genuine laugh, but they didn't give you a courtesy laugh. And so John would do his five minutes bomb. And instead of crying and running out of the room, John sat down, took his seat, and then began to take notes as other comedians went up there. Yeah. And I just, I just thought that was, you know, you've got to be, it's, it's just a different level to, yeah, they, as, you know, to, it, it, to be in front of people. and share something that you thought was funny yeah, and it's nothing. And then go back to the drawing board to put yourself in that, in, 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 in front of the, um, firing squad. Once again, I, I it just is, feel like it is like a bungee jumping or a firing squad. And I, I came when I was out here in the late eighties, I thought about doing stand up, and I respected the craft so much because my friends do it. It's not in my DNA, but I want, I remember they said Letterman, he would be at the comedy store, but he'd like hosting it. He didn't like to do stand up. And the guys I like Bill Murray didn't like to do stand up. And it's just a little too aggressive for me, but I love writing jokes and I was able to circumvent it. And, and, uh, they also said it takes uh, ten years to get a good, or five years to get a good twenty minutes, and it was just like, and if you just want to do something else, then do something else. So I have the uh, appropriate admiration for comics, stand-up yes. comics, but I, I, I'm glad I didn't do it. The other thing I'd say, as I'm giving you more details here, is some guys do it. I have friends. And, and others I observed that they, they don't necessarily have the same stage presence as like Tom Hanks didn't do stand up. He was in a movie called punchline where he played a stand up, but he's naturally more charismatic than some people that are doing it up on stage. So it's a craft. 
some of the guys Always. that do it are kind of nerdy guys that have bad posture, but they love writing jokes and they, <laughs> and then you start laughing anyway, because the way the guy looks, you know what I'm saying? Right. But it's, it's, yes. it's an art form and it's, it's wonderful. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm a big Seinfeld fan. Uh, and I used to see him do stand up. So I, I, yeah, it's interesting. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Trent, I to, go ahead. I had to, my six, I have to come into America would be my six man. The one, the original and, uh, one, right? The original one. Yeah, the original. Way, way back original. in the day. Yes, yes. Um, those are good. Those are good. I'm impressed. I'm very impressed with Christopher Nolan. So that's a little sci-fi stuff there, right? Yeah, yeah. He's just, he's, yeah, he's just, he's just terrific, uh, terrific filmmaker. And um, um, I think Oppenheimer is his next one coming out, and I'll be there. Yeah. First night that opens too. So I'm a, definitely a Nolan nerd. It is time. Michael Grady for the Life Gorgeous Quiz. Simple questions, profound insights. We have just a couple questions. This is kind of fun. This is me spinning it. Who is my favorite Nets player of all time? My favorite Nets player of all time. <laughs> I give uh, you I give you a hint if you need it, but I I grew up in the 70s, but I don't know. She became a fan in '89. No, Nets, Nets fan. Oh, Nets fan. Net, oh, Nets. Yeah, Nets, I didn't Nets. say oh, Timberwolves. Yeah, okay, my fault. Okay. Yeah, who is my uh, favorite Nets? I didn't say the city before it. I because the Nets have been Timberwolves. moved around a little bit. Okay, who so is Dr. My J. Was, absolutely, Dr. J. Obsessed. <laughs> I was obsessed. Everyone thought I was Larry Bird guy. I like Larry at Indiana State. Then I hated him because he was going against Dr. J. Then Doc retired in '87, and then I liked Larry Bird, but. <laughs> Dr. J, whose wife's name was Turquoise, uh, I was obsessed with Dr. J. Biggest hands in basketball. He was 6'6. His hands were bigger than Kareem Abdul Jabbar's. He did, you know, the windmill dunks, the the power outage, the Statue of Liberty. Sometimes Jim Pete, I've heard him say this, and that's because we're about the same age. Nas will come down. Nas Reed will hold the ball and extend it up with one arm. And and Jim will go, Doctor J, because that's what that's what Doctor J would do. So Doc was my, I was really obsessed with him. Oh, and one of my favorite interviews um, that I've been able to do was with uh, Doctor J. Yeah. And one of the first thing that I noticed oh. were those oh. <laughs> were those mitts. Loved. <laughs> yeah, no, you, have, you also have to realize in the seventies he played in the ABA, which was the red, white, and blue ball. It was a mysterious league with no television. And you just heard about this guy. They said he was Berezhnikov, the, the ballet dancer on the court. He would do all these moves that you've never seen before. <laughs> and then we'd see a couple highlights and he'd pick the ball up and wave it around. And we were like, who is this guy? I mean, Pat Riley <laughs> called him an alien. He was just like, this guy is amazing. So yes. I, when I was a kid, I was obsessed with Dr. J. I love it. I love it. You know, the um, uh, semi-pro was a good movie, you know, covering the, the ABA is, you know, good yeah. film, Will Ferrell. Um, but there's a book uh, from Terry Pluto, uh, Loose Balls. Ah, 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 and, ah, you know, I know, you know all about just, it. I mean, are you yes, kidding? Marvin yes, so Barnes, you know, how, you know not yes. getting on that time machine. There's a time change <laughs> on the airplane. I mean, that's great. Yeah, so we just had the you know the great uh, HBO Showtime show on the on the Lakers yeah. and whatnot. But I would love to see uh, a similar series on the ABA. Would love to see that. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. It was so great. Uh, <laughs> okay, these are these are some of these are deep now. You ready? Okay. Favorite pie. Favorite pie. <sighs> did you did you fall in love with this pie in Minnesota? I'm no. Oh, I'm sorry. The, this is not my favorite pie. This is your favorite pie. Oh, my favorite. Yeah. I pie. did a twist there. I'm going to do two. I'm going to do two oh, okay, of my okay, favorites. Gotcha. I'm going to do a song coming up later, but right now this is, <laughs> this is your favorite pie. I got to do it. Okay. My favorite pie is sweet potato pie. Oh, that's good. I'll tell you why I like that. I judge the answers. You know, Finchie was on, he said blueberry pie, which is tremendous. Blueberry okay. pie is very good. I don't think I've had blueberry. Uh, have you ever had key lime pie? My... Key lime pie, yes. That's good. Some people don't that like it. That is very it, good. Right? So I like pumpkin pie. Because we only have it once a year. I love yes. it. But sweet potato pie is somewhat similar to pumpkin pie. Yes, they're cousins. And I'm, I'm a big pumpkin pie guy too. 
Oh, I don't know if you'll answer this one. Which <laughs> which NBA player bugs you the most? Bugs me. Or your least favorite NBA player. I might you might not want to say because you broadcast games. Uh no, I'll I'll say the the guys who Oh, you're not gonna name hunt. a specific guy. Okay. I'll say no, I mean it's a it's a it's a trio. Um it's uh Trey Young, oh, man. James Harden. Okay. <laughs> and then I inter I interchange between Joel Embiid and Luka Doncic. Um now, tremendous respect for Embiid, who who I had Jokic is the MVP all season long, but but later in the season I flipped to Embiid. Mm -hmm. Luca's a tremendous player, obviously, but I don't. Even though it's a part of the game and it's a tactic and it's crafty or whatever, just who you don't have to hunt for, right? You know, foul calls, and I don't want to watch a free throw contest. Yep. I want to see a basketball yep. game. So that's probably that probably bugs me. I like most. that a lot because the, yes. first of all. I used to, if you asked me a few years ago, I, I couldn't stand watching Harden with the Rockets because he just dribbled too much and I'd fall asleep and everyone would fall asleep as he yo-yos. And then I had a problem <laughs> with Embiid when he used to get really physical with Cat. And in fact, they had a fight a few years ago, but it's chilled oh, out yeah. a little bit. Uh, Trey Young <laughs> is so irritating. I'm a little mosquito, little mosquito. I'm not, I right. actually... I, I never liked the game of Russell Westbrook because he's not a good shooter, and they say he plays angry because he's so athletic. So I wasn't a big fan of his. I wasn't a fan of Pat Beverly. Bad attitude, but I know he really helped the team last year. But no, those are those are good. Those are good choices. I'm glad you did that because I didn't know if you could do that because when they hear this, and Embiid watches this, <laughs> Joel Embiid watches this podcast, The Life Gorgeous, all the time. Um uh, <laughs> And I was, I was with Harden for about, I don't know, 20 games in Brooklyn. Right. And actually, I actually uh, fell in love with him in, uh, in, in, in Brooklyn. Right. It was, it, was, uh, it was great until it wasn't great. But yeah, no, I stand by that. I stand. Okay. <laughs> I'm back to now. This is my, this is, I'm just having a little fun here. <sighs> I grew up in Minnesota and there was a guy named Prince Rogers Nelson. What is my favorite? favorite prince song and i'm going to give you three guesses if you need a hint i'll give you a hint but what is my favorite prince song i'll give you a hint after your first guess that's what i'll do uh I'll, I'll start with let's go crazy nope i'm gonna give you the hint i'm as my brother says i'm a sucker for ballads i like slow jams i like ballads okay I'll be very impressed if you get this. It is a popular song, but not not as popular as some songs. But you know, it's it's a, it's up there. It's one of the uh, oh oh. See, then I'm I, I'm just gonna know like the popular ones. I'm oh. just gonna know the purple rings and the wind oh, ups cry. I want to know uh, if you know this one. A lot, a lot. And I'm gonna cue this up as soon as we're done, too. By the way, oh, it's oh, good. Craig's favorite. Do you want him or do you want me? No, that's that's not it. That's the beautiful ones. <laughs> anyway, this is uh like you've never done before he screams at the end do me baby you ever heard do me baby no oh you're gonna was... love it you're gonna it's gonna change your life <laughs> it's funny the way my mind works i'm saying okay craig's gonna tell me the name of the song and if prince has another solid game in the play of the playoffs oh yeah whatever the name of the song is i'm gonna shout that on the mic do me baby <laughs> <laughs> oh do me baby uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if you could do that's it. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. <laughs> trying to think of the lyrics. No, it's a great song. Uh, you'll I'm like it. It's, it it's a slow jam, but it's good. And finally, I it. Michael, I know you're a red wine guy. What is your cocktail of choice, or don't you partake? Do would you have a cocktail of choice? Hard liquor? Um, do you have a? I I I lately I've been you know um, Themas has a great presentation for their old fashioned. Oh. And, um, I mean, they light up the, the wood oh, yeah. and they, I, that's mean, right. they, I mean, they threw a, uh, like a beautiful presentation. And so that's my, that's, that's been probably my go-to yeah. this season. If I'm not having, um, if I'm not having red wine, right? if I'm not having red wine, it's probably just a simple, basic old fashioned. 
That's good. I, I commend you and say stick to red wine. It's better for you. I do like a vodka martini <laughs> on occasion. It's my favorite thing. I like the martini glass. I think it's aesthetically pleasing. Uh, I don't drink old fashions. Uh, everywhere. They're very popular. The big ice cube and everything. But they have sugar. I don't like all the extra sugar. But I love myself a martini. I'm oh. that you know that may be the next endeavor for me. Yeah, just be careful, you. man. Just be careful. A little bit. You're off. Uh, make sure I don't have a game the next day. Yeah, they <laughs> still card you, don't they, in uh, Minneapolis? <laughs> you're, you're so young. Um, <laughs> that was great, man. I appreciate it. No, I appreciate you. I'm glad we could. I'm glad we could finally do this. I was looking forward to this. That was fun. Uh, <laughs> Michael Grady, ladies and gentlemen, let me say now goodbye to my friends and fans. That's the life gorgeous for this week. We will see you next time. And remember, young people, I'm proud of you. Thank you.